Douglas Holtz-Eakin is the president of the American Action Forum, a center-right policy institute that analyzes economic, domestic, and fiscal policy issues. Just the person we want to chat with at this hour. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, the My big pleasure. question here, is the U.S. going to default on its debt next week, or do you think the president and Republican leaders can reach a compromise? We just heard McConnell say, listen, stay calm, but curious what you think. I, I think this has all the uh, indications of reaching an agreement. Uh, they have stepped up the intensity of their meetings. They're meeting more frequently. They've narrowed the circle of people who are in the room. That that leads to agreement typically. They're kicking things up to more senior levels. The president and the speaker are sitting down talking. Uh, all of that sounds like people who are getting close to an agreement. Uh, my hope is it's, it's, it's quite close, and uh, they can quickly pass this, and we can put this in the rearview mirror. When you hear, though, uh, you know, kind of this ever-changing feel on whether or not they're feeling confident in progress and, you you know, it keeps changing almost seemingly by the day, how do you factor that into what you, you're saying it seems like it would be close? Well, we've seen this movie before, you know, 2011, 2013, uh, e even more recently. I don't put a lot of faith in the readout that you get from a politician walking out of a negotiating room. Uh, that that statement's typically for spin or leverage or to to take an advantage of a position. Um, what I'm looking for is, do they come back and meet again? Uh, do they um, uh, continue to narrow the, the list of issues? And that seems to be happening, and, and I think that's hopeful, and I choose to be hopeful. Um, you know, I think we heard from the, the Capitol Hill reporter, the, the consequences of failure are quite large and, and not something I really want to contemplate. So uh, I th say keep working and get this done. Well, to that point, uh, what would a compromise look like? Well, remember, at some level, this isn't new. Uh, we're trying to pass bipartisan legislation that has to get 218 votes in the House, 60 votes in the Senate be signed by the president. And so this is something all parties have done before, and it means that nobody gets what they want. You have to settle for less than, than a perfect bill on all sides. And I think the contours of, of what the bill would look like are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, the president certainly wants something that goes past the election. He said that repeatedly. It, it'll go past the election. Uh, it's in, an imperative for Republicans in the House that they have something which cuts spending, uh, reclaims the unspent COVID funds, puts caps on future spending, cuts current spending by how much is, is probably one of the big issues. Senate Democrats are not going to sign on to work requirements in Medicaid, so that, that's going to be off the table. So you, you can see the kind of base bill that would that would emerge from that. And, and all parties, by the way, have agreed that some sort of reform to our permitting system for big energy infrastructure is, is important to do. So that's something that can be in there. Everyone has to have something they can point to and say, I got that. And, and I think all parties have something now. It's a matter of, you know, closing down and, and having the remaining issues settled. I mean, when you say that at that point of closing down and just honing in on, you know, coming to an agreement, uh, what will it take to reach an agreement? Because, as you've mentioned, this has happened many times before. So what will it take? Well, um, this looks a lot like 2011, at least to me, where the parties started out very entrenched, unwilling to uh, move at all. And it takes outside pressure to, to change those positions. And we've seen that happen to some extent already. Uh, certainly, markets reacting as they did today and most likely will uh, on a daily basis. It'll ratchet up as they go forward. That's that's a pressure that says we can't afford big financial disturbances. We don't need more economic headwinds. Settle this. And, and that'll be helpful in getting to a deal as well. Uh, just circling back here, because we have some sound from Speaker McCarthy on what he had to say today yeah. when he was asked about what kinds of concessions Republicans might be willing to make. Let's listen to that really quickly. What are those concessions? We're going to raise the debt ceiling. That's your concession. That's yeah. Well, 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 let's think about it. No policy concessions. No. Well, well, I look at it like this. Um, everything we're doing is going to make America stronger, curb inflation, and less dependent upon China. Listen, we passed the bill that raised the debt ceiling. The Senate hasn't done anything. Um, and so we're sitting, communicating, working together, and they're just now coming up with the idea of freeze. They didn't want to negotiate for 100 days. Okay, a little difficult to hear him there, but, you know, we know that Democrats sure. won't agree, as you've alluded to, to some of the steep cuts Republicans are asking for. If we can just dive in a little bit more specifically, what are the sticking points 
and can both sides come together on those said sticking points? Well, if we, this was being done in regular order, the House has passed a bill. And so what would happen is the Senate takes up the bill and amends it until you get to the point where it can pass the Senate. So what would that take? Well, certainly uh, the work requirements would come out. Uh, they're not going to be in Medicaid. They might toughen them in SNAP and, and, and some of the other programs, but not the radical changes. Uh, they certainly are not going to repeal the, the president's signature energy, uh, uh, clean energy tax credits and things like that. That'll have to come out. Uh, they're not going to put up with 10 years of, of budget caps. There'll be a shorter number. Uh, I don't think they want to cut uh, discretionary spending back to fiscal 22 levels. They, they want to compromise and go to, say, this year's level. So it, well, there will be a set of things that Senate Democrats will have to get out of that bill in order to be happy. And at the same time, the president should be keeping track of whether he'd be willing to sign it and, given the, the essence of, of speed here, make sure that it'll still get through the House. This process is really that on, a, on, a, on, a, on steroids. They're sitting in a room, checking with the Senate Democrats, are you happy yet, making sure they can still get 218 in the House, and is the president willing to sign? I, I, but it looks like the things that are on the table are the things that need to be settled in order to get to an agreement. There's nothing new that will emerge. Okay, Douglas Holtz-Eakin giving us a little bit of a silver lining here, hopefully. Thank you for joining me today and sharing your insight. We appreciate it.